So I'm going to talk about skin grafts. So why would you skin graft someone? So we talked about burns is one reason. The other reason I skin graft people is if they get a large wound where the skin is lost. So like maybe like you have a surgery and it all falls apart and you lose skin and then you have a wound here that's all filled in, but there's no skin on it. That'd be a perfect time to use a skin graft. The other reason I use skin grafts very frequently is something called fasciotomy. So if you get too much pressure, like in an extremity, it can actually kill all the muscle. And so what they'll do is they'll make cuts in the, in the skin and the muscle to release that pressure. Okay. And when you do that, it's almost impossible to close it. And so you end up with this like really wide wound. And oddly enough, I mean, I, I skin graft people for fasciotomies like literally all the time. I probably do one a month. Nice. Um, I guess. I mean, <laughs> they're, I mean, they're cool surgeries. In fact, I think some of the videos I'm going to show in a minute, don't run them yet, Charles, but I do have some videos and I think some of those are fasciotomies. So, um, so there's two types of skin grafts, uh, and this is where it gets kind of like confusing, but it's informative. So I want, you know, trying to be a doctor here and educate. Yeah. So there's split thickness graft. So a split thickness graft means that you're only taking part of the skin. All right. And then the other type of graft is a full thickness graft. And that's where you take the entire piece of skin and move it. And so there's different reasons why you would use those. So most commonly we use split grafts. So splits where you take a shave of skin and that shave is 12 thousandths of an inch thick. Mm. So skin is like one to two millimeters in thickness, depending on where, where it's at. So that 12 thousandths of an inch is roughly 20% of the skin. So you're taking one. So if this is your skin layer, you're taking like this part of it. And what happens is that the remaining skin that you leave behind will heal fine. The epithelial cells come out of like the hair follicles and out of the uh, glands and they repopulate the epithelial cells and you can harvest that skin and, in, and within you know a few weeks it's completely healed but the skin that you take you can move it somewhere and it'll form new skin in that location so it's a great way to deal with things like burns and wounds now the difference in that would be a full thickness graft so why would you use a full thickness graft well the problem with split grafts are they don't look great. I mean, they don't look terrible, but you can definitely tell when someone's had a split thickness skin graft. Like you may have seen it on somebody and not know what you're looking at. You're like, oh, your skin looks weird. And they might say, well, I, I, <laughs> oh, I, your skin <laughs> looks weird. I can just see Sarah running around. Oh, your skin looks weird. Oh yeah, I had a skin graft. Thanks for noticing. But, but you might <laughs> say like, in I your know. mind, in your mind, you're like, oh, that person's skin looks unusual. And it could be a skin graft, okay? Um, but a full thickness graft tends to look more natural. So where I use full thickness grafts would be like on the face. face yeah. yeah. So like when people get where I do them commonly, not necessarily burns on the face, because most of those go to burn centers and I don't work in a burn center anymore, but like skin cancers. If you take right. a huge piece of skin like off the nose, a lot of times I'll use a full thickness graft for that. And so you harvest those in a different places because you want to match the skin. So like if I'm doing a full thickness graft on the hand, which is another place you use them because the, the problem with split grafts is they're not as flexible and a full thickness is flexible. So the hand that moves a lot, you'd want to use a full graft. So I usually take a pinch like right here. You can actually pinch the skin right here on your palm. Yep. And cut this little piece of skin out and then just close this up directly mm. and then use that skin to like resurface a finger. Same thing like on the face, like if somebody had cancer, I would take it from behind the ear because this skin is very similar to that, both in oh, color yeah. and thickness and use it there. The other places I'll take skin from the groin if I'm doing like full thickness grafts or like an areola. Did I, did I show the nipple areola reconstruction on I think, the show? I think you've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. I think we said we couldn't show it because we were afraid that Facebook would shut us down. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's banging around. It is on the Nip Talk YouTube page. I know it is on that and it's on my personal one. Okay. But anyway, I, there's, a, there's a video there of me taking a full thickness graft to make an areola. So, so those are the different split grafts and full grafts. And so splits are the most common. So I, I tend to, we'll talk about that a little bit more and actually have some video. Travis, I think I have a video that, that shows skin grafts. Can you roll that? Absolutely. All right, let's see it. So this is the Dermatome. This is the device that we use to harvest the shave of skin that will be used for the skin graft. There we go. Skin grafts right here. This patient had a wound on the leg after a skin cancer removal. Once the graft is harvested, it's run through a mesher to let it spread out and also drain fluid. 
Then the skin graft is either glued or in this case, sutured to the wound bed and will heal within two weeks. Like and follow us for more content. Yeah, so that's basically a video that shows how skin graft works. You, that, that, the thing I had in my hands called a dermatome, and think of it as like a meat slicer. That's what it is, and you can set the thickness. And so nowadays, all split grafts are done at 12 thousandths. That's just kind of industry standard. Mm -hmm. So it's, it shaves that piece off. I had the skin there. I run it through the mesher, and so you mesh it so that fluid can escape from underneath it. And also, it lets it spread out. And you can mesh it big. So I actually did a really big skin graft the other day on a guy uh, that was in a car wreck, and he, and he, he had like this really big leg wound and he didn't have the greatest skin. So instead of meshing it like at a small amount, I meshed it a big amount. So basically doubled the amount of graft I yeah. got from a piece of skin. And then you, you attach it to the wound. And I use both fiber and glue and sometimes sutures. I tend to use more glue these days than yeah. suture. Uh, and then you put a dressing on it, which I use vacuum dressings, which are kind of the standard now. And nowadays, like if you know what you're doing, a skin graft should be a 99% take. I mean, nice. Unless something terrible happens, like the patient pulls my dressing off or something equally disastrous, like all of my skin grafts are like is almost 100% take. Quick question. When, yeah. when you are like removing the skin to yeah. place it somewhere else, does that like does does that skin like either grow back yeah. there or does it hurt when they uh, when you remove they're a little sore so imagine if you were running in the parking lot and you scraped your leg oh, okay yeah. that's like what a donor site would feel like because it's just very superficial sure but yeah what happens is where you harvest that skin that skin just regrows oh wow okay. and so in fact you can like re-harvest the same place over and over and, mm. and i got an interesting story i'll tell you at the very end For um sure. uh, but i want to show you a couple more pictures first so the next picture i have is a graft after the five this patient days. had a wound on the leg uh, uh, yeah, that one. There we go. So that's a skin graft at five days. And that patient actually had the flesh eating bacteria. Um, that's a pretty interesting one. And so that's at five days and the skin graft doesn't look completely normal, but it looks more normal than when you first throw it down. Now I got a couple more photos. Let's just roll them. Uh, so that's another uh, leg wound. That's the dermatome right there that I used to shave it. Uh, go on to the next one. So that's the piece of skin. It's a little bit wow. better picture of it after you harvest it. And then that's a picture of it after it's meshed and put on the wound. And I think the next one is, yeah. So you see here that that's a, at five days, that's a perfect take of the skin graft. That's mm. how it should look. And it will look more like normal skin as, um, as time goes on. Yeah. Um, but one of the craziest, I have like tons of stories about my years in the burn unit, but the craziest story I have is there was this really old guy. He was like in his seventies and he had a 90, it was like a 95% burn. So remember we talked about age plus burn equals mortality. Mm -hmm. Like so I knew this guy chance was, of dying. Yeah. I mean, he was going to die for yeah. sure, but you know, you, it, you can tell a patient's family that they're not going to make it, but if they say we want to do everything, you kind of have to do everything. Mm -hmm. So long story short, this guy ended up dying. Yeah. Uh, but the only area of his body that was not a full thickness, third degree burn, cause he fell into a fire pit. Like that's how he got burned. Like, you know, fire pits were like in the ground, like it was a raging fire. He fell in it mm. and then he couldn't get out of it. And so he was in this thing for like a long time. Dang. They finally got him out. So the only area of him that was not burned was the top of his head and the soles of his feet. Cause he had really good boots on. Now the boots like got burned away, but like the top part of it, I guess had enough protection. So over the course of like three to four months before he ended up dying, which I knew he was going to die. We tried to tell the family, but they wanted to do everything. So we did everything. Um, but I completely skin grafted his entire body by taking skin only off the top of his head and the soles of his feet. And what I would do is I would mesh it nine to one. We usually do one and a half to one. I mesh these nine to one. So the piece of skin that I took went this big and I skin grafted this guy's entire body How over the course of months take? and completely got new skin to grow on him. Cause I kept just taking the same area. I would harvest this on the scalp, wait two or three weeks and then redo it. And I skin grafted this guy's entire body. It was actually a pretty huge accomplishment. And it's kind of sad because he ended up dying. Cause if it had been like, you know, a 20 year old that would have survived it, it would have been a pretty impressive like feat. Yeah. It was still impressive, but it was, you know, it, the impressive part is kind of diluted by the fact that he died. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just, you know, you just get too sick at that age from the burns. Like he ended up going into heart failure, lung failure, kidney failure. And, you know, I was able to skin graft his entire body, but you know, the damage was done. So interesting stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, 
I don't entirely miss my days in the burn unit. Like there's some really sad things. Anymore. I did burn surgery in Tennessee and Kentucky. Yeah. So you get a lot of like methamphetamine explosions. Like that was like super common. Yeah. Like house fires from meth. Like I, at any time in the burn unit when I was in Kentucky and Tennessee, we always had some sort of meth fire. Like, it was just constant. Out I don't know the, that, that doesn't Out happen. in the woods. Yeah, well, you know, Kentucky. I mean, I, I love Kentucky, Tennessee, but there are some, you know, rural people out there and methamphetamine is a problem. Yeah. So, but anyway, Travis, did I answer your questions about skin grafts? I you did. You were asking you, him. You definitely did. Yeah, is that more information you wanted? That's some good, no, no, no. That's some good information. Right. I, I didn't know how skin grafts are made. Now you see. Honestly. It. You could probably do one. See, so we have this thing in medicine. Yeah, sure. See one, <laughs> do one, teach one. When we're talking about training residents, just, like absolutely, you just watch let a me surgery, be your you do surgeon, a surgery, surgical. Uh, so you've seen one, so now you're ready to do your own skin graft. Don't For do sure, one hundred percent.